the coming back was it was it was really kind of the reason that I joined uh, Slipknot in the first place was to do something different. And um, but around 2001, musically, personally, physically, we kind of hit this wall that it, it, I wasn't being fulfilled musically. I wasn't getting really getting to do the things that I wanted to do. You know, so I had been working on this project kind of. You know, on the down low with, with Josh and that really became a passion obsession and that really led to this coming back you know so the same reason that I joined Slipknot was the same reason that we started Stone Sour again was to do something different and the, the payoff has been amazing it's just really been really been good This was more of a, a collaborative effort, you know. This was more about us writing the songs together <clears throat> than it was. The, I mean, because the the first album was really kind of a hodgepodge, you know. We had some songs that me and Josh had written. You had some old Stone Sour stuff. We had some stuff that we had kind of written together. So it, it didn't really have a direction, you know. I mean, as good as it was, it didn't really have that focus. And in this album, we had some time to kind of take our time and collaborate and work on stuff and really work together. Yeah, I mean, it really shows where we were at at that time, and it shows an evolution, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's something we want to do with, uh, you know, with this band, is have our natural evolution happen instead of just putting out the same record over and over again. Yeah, instead of just kind of, like, flailing in a genre, let's start our own genre, basically. I mean, bands used to do that all the time, and now, sadly, it's kind of a lost art. So we're like, you know what? We make Stone Sour music. We don't make this kind of music. We make our own music, and that's all that really matters. No comment. <laughs> it's it is what it is. I mean, it's I think it's very pretentious. I, I think it's very uh, kind of you know. There's a lot of upturned noses, you know, which is so stupid, you know, because the fans don't do that. You know, the fans are the fans are going to embrace you regardless. You know, I, I think metal fans are one of the few groups of fans that really kind of draw from all those little ways of life, you know, and uh, when they come together, yeah, they shouldn't, they may be into different bands, but they're there to celebrate the music, you know, whereas a lot of bands really don't feel that way anymore. They they get up on stage and they're like, yeah, it's good for you to see us, isn't it? You know, and it's like, fuck you, man, are you serious? We, uh, you know, we've tried to stay as, as down to earth as possible, you know, I mean, we take the piss out of each other all the time, you know, we, we act like ourselves around the fans and we don't put this barrier of propaganda and publicity in front of us, basically. And uh, I think that's why the, 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 the new breed, 90% of the new breed is really just kind of sad, man, you know? In some ways, yeah, very much so. There's a level of freedom that you have, you know, in Stone Sour that just doesn't happen in Slipknot, you know? I mean, as, as, uh, kind of as diverse as Slipknot is in its genre, it's still very much a metal band. Um, with this band, I mean, we kind of draw from whatever we want, you know? Which is why you have songs like Three Glass and, you know, Next to 303150 or Good God or, you know, I mean, Cardiff and just all these different things. I mean, we just, uh, that it really starts with just not giving a fuck, really. I mean, we, we write the kind of music we want to make and, and we put it out there, you know? And um, so for us, absolutely, it's a, there's a definite freedom that kind of comes with taking that away and just, just basically saying, look, this is us. You either like us or you don't. At the end of the day, it's not gonna break our hearts if you don't, so move along, you know? I'm not sure. I'm sure there are, but at a concert, I mean, I mean, I've seen you know, the biggest metalheads singing along to Bother and Through Glass. I mean, I mean, really giving it too, right? out of key. But I mean, it's still brilliant, you know. I mean, they're just they're they're really going for it. I think they they embrace all of it, you know. I think it's because it's honest and it transcends genre, yeah. you know. I don't know. I mean, we're just kind of stoked to be doing it anyway, you know. Um, so we just. We try to get, you know, we try to focus, but at the same time, we try to get in that headspace where it's it's just going to be fun, you know, because when we're on stage, 
the thing that we love is that people can see how much we're enjoying ourselves. You know? <clears throat> we're not one of these bands that is very stoic. We just look at me. I'm here because I'm here for you. You know, and it's so fucking contrived and bullshit. For us, I mean, we're chasing each other around the stage, trying to kick each other in the ass. And, <laughs> you know, half the time my ass is hanging out anyways. It doesn't really matter. So it's, just for us, it's really just kind of a celebration, you know. So getting ready for that, it's almost like, how fast can we get on stage, you know? Because yeah. we're all just really fucking anxious to get out there and just kind of spend it with the audience. Well, with, with Stone Sour, it, it's, it's kind of like I said. I mean, there's, there's an enjoyment there that, you know, we, we really kind of don't get with Slipknot, you know? I mean, with Slipknot, it's, it's a great show, it's very physical, and you really <clears throat> get to work out a lot of shit. But at the end of the day, it, it really, it's a really dark fucking place, you know? So it's, it's kind of hard to, to stay upbeat and happy when you're fucking miserable. And the, the only way you can answer that question is to go back in time to 1999 and be one of us yeah. up to this point yeah and that's it's, the only way you could ever understand is to walk a mile in our shoes yeah. so to speak you know and it, it's it's too hard to really describe fully yeah. i know? mean we're we're definitely proud of what we've done with that band you know but at the end of the day i mean we just we just smile a lot when we're up on that stage whether it's you know kind of a psychological tune like monolith or it's me Fucking playing Sweet Home Alabama with him playing the fucking lead, in, you know, in the background and shit. It's just, it's just a lot more. It's a lot more all-encompassing, really. You know, it's a little more, it's a little more down to earth, and uh, it just feels good to be able to do that. No, man, I, I, I I've, I've never understood guilty pleasures, just for the fact that if you like it. And, why not embrace it, you know? I mean, I listen to everything from the Buzzcocks <coughs> here to uh, ABBA. I fucking love ABBA. I, right? put, I put on Chocolate by Kylie Minogue last night, oh, and, and Booma and his wife are like, oh, brilliant song! Yeah. It's just, you know, I mean, if you like what you like, then why not embrace it, you know? Why not just fucking put it out there, you know? You can't, you can't start chopping stuff up into, oh, I can't tell my friends, like, like this, you know, I mean, that's then, that's when you really kind of, you're cutting off your own taste, you know, because then you, it, it, there's a fear there, whereas music is supposed to open you up, you know, and uh, I, I know a lot of metal fans that are probably like, oh, I hate Abba, you know, but at, you know, at the end of the day, they're like, take a chance, take a, take a chance, chance, take a, you know, that's a fucking brilliant song, how can you not feel that? It just makes you want to fucking be Swedish, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, I almost hesitated, but, you know, I absolutely do. I, I think what we did with Slipknot will last a long time. But I think to do current shit, I think this band has, has stronger legs just for the fact that it, it appears to appeal to a lot of people. And just the, and like, just the infatuation that a lot of our fans have with them. Um, you know, just with the band and with us and the music itself, I, I think that we could probably do this for a while. You know, I think Sleep Slipknot's going to leave a legacy behind that will last a long time. But I don't know if physically and mentally we can do that forever, man. I mean, it's a fucking heavy duty thing to do. It really is. And uh, you, sometimes you just you just want to fucking break down and cry because it's just so heavy. But um, you know, I, I think this could really go on for a while. You know, it'll go on as long as we want to do it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, anything can happen, you know? I mean, we've, we've definitely been writing a lot, and uh, we've definitely got a lot of stuff going on. So, um, you know, it, it, all, it all depends on what's right to do, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm trying not to look that far ahead in the yeah, future, though. If, yeah. you, if you look too far ahead, you tend to get a little depressed. So, yeah. you know, right now we're just... You know, going tour by tour, and we'll see what happens. The greatest way to make God laugh is to announce your plans out loud, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, just see what happens. Just play it, you know, day by day, and just see what happens.